worry about studying from a prayer. I could just say what I do. Amen. Say what I do. Right. Uh, I like to take this time and just pray. Body your heads, Heavenly Father, we like to thank you for a day that we never seen before, a day that we never see again. Thank you. Like to thank you for yesterday. Thank you. Like to thank you for today. Right. Thank you for tomorrow in advance if you see fit, Heavenly Father. Yes, right. I would like to thank you. I would like to pray for the folks that's not here, the folks that would love to be here, that can't be here, that's watching us on live. Heavenly Father, pray for our pastor, pray for the church, pray for his family, pray for every church that stands in your name, sir. We love you, believe you, Heavenly Father. Pray for our pastor that he gives deliver the word to help each and every one of us in some type of way, Heavenly Father. We would like to thank you once again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
no more sickness, but in the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. But while we're on this side, we're just going to continue to lift him up with him. Here we go. Sorry about that. 
that. I was born October 12, 1919. I was American Naval cook. I was the first black recipient of the Navy Cross and a nominee for the Medal of Honor. As a mess attendant, second class in the United States Navy, I helped carry wounded soldiers to safety during the attack on Pearl Harbor. I then made the anti-aircraft gun, and despite no prior training in gunnery, officially shot down one plane, according to the Navy Department records, but I, of the eyewitness, claimed the range of four to six. My name is Doris Miller. Come on, friendship, put your hands together. Give some to Sherry a hand of praise today. Come on, put your hands together. Give up a big God bless you. Thank God for all of your presence this morning. Thank God for being in the house of the Lord one more time. How many of y'all are happy and you know what? Then guess what? Your face ought to what? Surely, surely. Let me say good morning to the church. What a blessing it is to be alive. What an even greater blessing it is to be saved. For the reality of our conviction is we're not smiling on God. But how many of y'all know God is richly smiling on us? Amen. 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 How many of y'all know he didn't have to do it? But how many of y'all are glad he woke you up this morning? Anybody glad he started you on your way? Anybody glad he gave you another chance? And how many of y'all know if it had not been the Lord on our side? We'd be somewhere dead, buried, sleeping in our grave. But is there anybody glad he looked beyond your faults? Come on, I know I'm in the right place. Let me try again. He looked beyond your faults. And he supplied all of our every needs. Amen. Let me say thank you again to each of you again this week for all your calls, emails, and text messages, whatever capacity of communication we've experienced together this week. Let me say to you, thank you. Thank you even last week for your flexibility. I pray that on Wednesday you were able to enjoy your sweetheart. I pray on Wednesday you were able to just, again, do that which the Lord had gifted you to do. I enjoyed my time with my wife. Amen. And for that, I tell the Lord, thank you. And so thank you for showing up on Bible study on Thursday. I said all the time, I, I can't shout about a God I don't study. Amen. And so I'm grateful today for you and your moments of studying. Thank you for, amen, the sacrifice of those 60 minutes to an hour and five that we might come together and hear that which the Lord has purposed in our hearts to hear. Amen. A couple of things this week. I do want us to be reminded we will have Bible study in uh, church school tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, at, uh, tomorrow night, rather, at 7 o'clock p.m., we will have church school Monday night, 7 o'clock p.m., amen. And then Wednesday, we'll come together, we'll have Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. As of right now, it is Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m., amen. Then praise team, your rehearsal has to be announced, and so please wait on Sister Day, she'll get with you in regards uh, to praise team rehearsal, amen. I'm leaving this afternoon shortly after I get through preaching. I head to Douglas, Georgia uh, for our adjourned session for our General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia as we will continue to meet tomorrow and Tuesday as we get ready for election of this year of 2024 in November at the annual session. So I leave this week. So keep us in your prayers. Amen. That no hurt, harm, or danger would rise in our life. Now, next week is the fourth Sunday. Again, it's going to be what we entitled uh, Heritage Sunday, Old Fashioned Sunday. So whatever it is that you desire to wear, I pray that you would join us in our old-fashioned attire and or our African attire. We'll do like we did last Sunday. We'll do it again this Sunday, next Sunday. Amen. I want you to take pictures, amen, and post them uh, throughout our Facebook page and send them to be posted so that we can uh, post them on your behalf. Did y'all enjoy last Sunday's fellow Amen. Amen. Those of you who were able to go out and look electronically, you were able to look and see the smiles and love uh, that was so richly rendered uh, to our family members. Amen. So again, I want to say thank you for that. So next Sunday, Heritage Sunday, Old Fashioned Sunday, we'll do again African attire. So please, ma'am, please, sir, come uh, next Sunday. Now, I want you to place this on your calendar because we've been asked to come, and so we're going to go uh, on March the 5th through the 7th, we will have our Valleywide Revival. Friendship is slated choir and uh, officers, which are deacons and ushers, you're slated to go on the 7th, which is a Thursday. So please, ma'am, please, sir, join with me. Place that on your schedule uh, at the Revelation Church in Columbus, Pastor Valerie Thompson, and uh, we'll have our evangelist, Pastor Reverend Dr. Charles E. Goodman, our good friend, our brother. He'll come here and share with us, amen, during the course 
of the Mount Calvary Valley Wide Revival. So please, ma'am, please, sir, place that on your calendar and uh, hope that we can get there together as a family on March the 7th. Amen. Then on the 29th, I'll be preaching Good Friday service. That's March 29th. I'll be preaching Good Friday service at the 4th Street Church in Columbus. Pastor uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. John H. Flakes III. So please pray with us and for us uh, as that comes and draws near. I just want to get that out there uh, so that we can get that on the, the calendar. Amen. Now, two things, and I promise I'll be out your way. Number one, the second Sunday in this month, we'll celebrate our church anniversary, and we've asked Pastor Gillespie at the Mountain Hill Baptist Church family to come and share with us their proud pastor and their people. They'll come that morning, roughly about the 10 15 hour, and we shall seek to lift up the name of our Christ. Hopefully, next Sunday and the first Sunday, we can give you some sentiments concerning what needs and steps uh, there it should be from the church, if any, and that way we we'll all be on the same accord. The last thing is next month, as we're gearing up again, is Women in History Month, and so uh, we want to celebrate the, our women, and so by doing that, a uh, couple of days, three Sundays out of the month, out of the five, we're going to ask that we will receive our ladies that will come, and you'll see a flyer uh, shortly, amen, as to who those ladies are, and so I pray that you will receive them on the first Sunday, the second Sunday, no, the first Sunday, the third Sunday, and the fourth Sunday, amen, and then we'll come and we'll preach Easter Sunrise Service on the fifth Sunday in the month of March. So all of these things have been given to you. Amen. They've been sent out by email and text messages. So I pray uh, that you would again govern yourselves accordingly. It's in the same month, the Women's History Month, the month of March. I want all of you to uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, galvanize your calendars, be present because our monthly study will be done by First Lady Arnithia Day. So she'll teach us during the month of March. Somebody say amen. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, amen. Please prepare your hearts to come and be a part of what the Lord has gifted to her as she shall render it unto us. Amen. Other than that, please continue to uh, pray one for another. Continue to look at, amen, your email and your text messages and all of those things. Please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure that we're in the right place at the right time. Is that right? Because, again, we're going forward by faith. For the text says, amen, we walk not by sight. But we walk what? By faith. By faith. Amen. Do me a favor. Wave at somebody across the sanctuary. If you would, wave at somebody. Come on, wave at them. Smile at them. Smile at them. We'll fellowship with them in just a moment. But it's just good to see you all. Amen. I said it's good to see you all. Amen. 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 I want us to be in prayer. Uh, for those of you who do not know, maybe you know now, but if you don't know, let me just share, share this with you. A couple of churches have now become vacant, so I want us to be in prayer uh, for the Bethlehem Church over in West Point. Those of you who are familiar with and know of LaGrange's first African-American black mayor, uh, Pastor Reverend Dr. Willie T. Edmondson, he went home to be with the Lord this week. Amen. And so we want to be in prayer for his family and this their time of bereavement as well as the Bethlehem Church family and this their time of bereavement. Amen. Also, I want you to be in prayer for the Mount Olive Church over in Phoenix City. Once in the Bible, I preach there on Tuesday, Tuesday night. Let me say to you all, thank you all so much for sharing with us there on Tuesday night. I was blessed uh, because of your presence, but that church also needs your prayers. Amen. Pastor and church have separated, so again, I want to make sure that, again, what we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Amen. It's not about a church. It's not about a person. Everything we do is about who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to be in prayer for those churches, those that we know of. You know others that we don't know of. I know others that you don't know of, but I believe prayer still works. And again, prayer may not please, uh, prayer may not change things, but prayer will always please God. Amen. To God be all of the glory. Did we have any visitors with us today? No visitors with us today to give yourself a hand clap of celebration for being here. Y'all look so good today. Thank God for you. We're going to transition real quickly to our gift moments, our giving time. Amen. Giving time for the Lord is a good time to give, for God loves a what? God loves a cheerful 
give. I just believe the more you give, the more God will indeed give unto you. Listen, can I can I get some folk over 66 today who ain't ashamed of some females over 66 who ain't ashamed of your age? Y'all come hold four baskets for me if y'all don't mind. Four four females over the age of 66, not 66 or five, but uh, but 66 over the age of 66. Y'all y'all come on. I got one. Come on, y'all, this is Louise Lahan. Thank you, Sister Louise. She said, I ain't ashamed of my age, Pastor. Amen. To God be the glory. Ain't nobody clapping but me. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Sister Fanny. Amen. Look at these ladies coming up here today. We all give them a hand of celebration. We are a family of love united. How? In the power of Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> they all came at the same time. Amen. Listen, we're making ready to give in this our moment of gift giving. For those of you who are here and are not familiar, again, our outside baskets are for our general time and public offering. Our silver basket is for our benevolent offering. Again, our black basket is for our capital campaign 2025. Whatever you give, I pray that you will give unto our God. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, this is my time. I give to you my faith. I give not out of formality. I give the obedience to your word. Bless it now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wherever you are, you will come now bring your gifts out to our God. Oh, for 
church. Come on, let's sing that like the old church. Come on, everybody. Oh.
thankful today for what our eyes have seen. We're thankful for what our ears have heard. We're thankful for what our hearts are now feeling. Help us, God, to walk not by sight, but help us to walk by faith. Help us to continue to be a family of love united in the power of Christ. God, help us in the name of your Son, Jesus. God, we thank you for these that are present. We thank you for even they that are watching here at the live stream. We thank you for even those that shall watch on the replay right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever we do in this place, help us to do it in your name. God, we thank you today. Thank you today for a rich word. Give us what we need. Again, this week, I pray that you bless us beyond our preparation. God, the people that day see none of me, but God, that they see all of me. God, we thank you today. We praise your name. I may not, but meet the cross behind me in the cross, that they see none of me.
seriously, come on, come on, if you really love the Lord, give God a praise in this place. I said, if you really love the Lord, come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout thank you, Jesus. Anybody beside me, really, 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 I really love the Lord. I love him. Because he first loved me. I wish I had a witness in here. How many are glad that even when you didn't love yourself, the Lord looked beyond who you were? And how many of y'all can tell the Lord, thank you for loving me, inspiring me? Listen, we'll be ready to hear a word from on high. I pray that you'll receive our word for today, that God will be pleased with our preaching. And as we're preparing now, our hearts and our minds, we're going to move around the sanctuary real quickly. Amen. I want you to greet somebody, whatever it is you feel comfortable with and doing. I pray now that you would give them, you know, a handshake, high five, whatever it is you do. Make them feel special. Amen. You never know what somebody is going through. Amen. So as musicians play, come on, let's move around real quickly. Amen. Find you somebody. Amen. It's good to see Sister Mark left so back with us today. Y'all make sure y'all go and fix up to her. Amen. To God be all of the glory.
on, friendship, help me, help me. God is how we try all temptations is that But in the midst of what God is taking us and how God is preparing to lead us, God 
scripture says to us is that if we are going to get from where we are to where God would have us to be, then we have to learn to do what our title so good seed. Jesus is now at the moment of chapter 13. Wow. He's getting ready to speak in the midst and moments of some parables. You know what parables are? Parables are a heavenly story with an earthly meaning. And here it is. I'm grateful today because of the reality of this story. What God says to us is that regardless of where we are, we can still make it. And I got out my seat this morning to suggest to somebody in the building that you can't make it based upon who you are. You can't make it based upon what you know. You can't make it based upon where you live. But here it is. If you're going to make it, then you got to make it based upon who God really is. What chapter 13 of Matthew's gospel dictates to the believer is the spirit of faith and trust. For what Matthew says today that if we are going to be able to sow good seed and watch it, we have to be able to have faith in sowing it and that trust that God will bring it alive. And I believe today there's some people in the building who, who think about what you are, who think about where you're headed, who think about where you're going, but yet you have faith but don't have trust. And I want to suggest to you today that yeah, I can have faith in who God is, but here it is, I got to learn to not just have faith, but learn to trust God, even when I can't trace God. And that's why I believe Jesus comes out of the text today by way of chapter 13 and says, watch this in verse number Three. Look what he said. He said, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Here it is. I want to know today that who the sower is. The sower represents you and I. In other words, we're the sowers tonight of who God is. We're sowers of his expression. We're sowers of his word. We're sowers of his ministry. The text says in verse number three, watch this. A sower went forth to sow. Can I ask the question today? How many of us today have got out our bed, got in our car, come down to no church 101, friendship strength to help us sow good seeds? Is there anybody in here today that come here on this Sunday morning, not just because it's the third Sunday morning, but how many of y'all come to sow good seeds? Uh, well, I want to suggest to you today, God never told you to develop the seed, but God simply says, uh, all I need you to do is simply sow good seeds. How do we sow good seeds? We sow good seeds in the midst of our preaching. We sow good seeds in the midst of our praying. We sow good seeds in the midst of our singing. We sow good seeds in the midst of our worship. We sow good seeds in the midst of what we do. Why? Because the more I sow, how many of y'all know God would make it come to pass? But there's too many of us today who want to harvest, but yet don't want to sow good seeds. I want to suggest to you today by way of this text today that yes, you want to insert yourself in the text. I like the text because I read the text this week. It simply said to me, LaCroix day, a sower went forth to sow. Can I get a couple of head church on this exercise? And I promise you, I get my seat question. Yeah, I'm going to be a sower of good seed. First of all, here it is. I got to learn to interrupt the silence. Shout back with me, interrupt the silence. So, uh, left from where he was, went to where he is in order to interrupt the silence. Can I suggest to you right there as I pay back the poll to push this from the pulpit? Watch this. You can't expect God to do anything in your life sitting silently on Sunday morning. But can I suggest to somebody in the building today that if God is going to bless you, let me tell you what you got to do. You got to learn to interrupt some silence. You got to learn to lift up the name of Jesus. You got to learn to magnify his name. Why? Because anything dead need to be buried. I just want to pause and ask the question. Is there anybody glad you're alive and well? Let me see the hands of y'all in here that thank God he woke you up this morning. He started to own your way. He gave you the activities of your limbs. Watch this. Then here it is. Don't you dare let no rock trade place him with you. But if God has been good to you, can I tell you what you ought to do? You ought to interrupt some silence. Glad to listen here. That's what the sword does. Look what the sword does in verse 3. Yeah. The text says the sword leaves where he was. Mm -hmm. Are y'all in here with me? And he goes to sow seed. Here it is, and I'm going to interrupt silence. Here's what I want you to understand today. Here it is. I got to desire what is not present. Yeah, man. Are 
Are y'all up here with me? Here you live. My, my desire is not what I can see. My desire is what I can't see. Are y'all listening to me here? But before I can reap what grows, I first got to plant what dies. Y'all ain't said nothing in here. And that's what I think about when I look at this text today. When I learn to desire, here it is, what is not present. It simply said, I got to have a leap of faith and walk out on God's word. I believe today that some people in the building who need to know that, yeah, sometimes you got to learn to praise God's name. Sometimes you got to learn to open up your mouth. Sometimes you got to learn to yell to the rooftop. Watch this. Let everything that has prayer do what? Praise the Lord. Can I park right there and ask the question? Is there anybody here came to praise God? Is there anybody in the building who ain't scared, that ain't stuck up, that say, hey, I come to praise God. Why? Because God has been too good to me. Can I tell you how I know? He let me lay down last night. Let me toss and turn all night long. But how many of y'all think I, the reason I interrupt this silent moment is because I did this morning. He woke me up, started me on my way. And for that, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Are y'all in here with me? Somebody going to have a thank you on your lips. Somebody going to have a thank you on your hearts. Somebody going to have a thank you in your mind because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, the question is where would I be? Can I tell you what you got to do? You got to learn to desire what is not present. I don't know what I desire. Watch this. What's not present? But they said that I got to move out of my normalcy. Are y'all going to hear what you hear? Is the sower could not sow standing where he was. And I believe that we're in the year 2024 and we're looking at 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. We are in the business of saying, day. we walk by faith and not by sight. Can I tell you, we got to move beyond our normalcy. How, how do I know? The text is, watch this, he went out. Do y'all see that? To sow. One version says he went out, the other version here says he went forth. In other words, he didn't stay in the same spot. And can I just drop my kids down right there? Just maybe. One of our sisters in here, the reason we can't get our heart is even because we're still singing the same song. We're still praying the same prayer. We're still standing in the same place. Can I tell you, if you want God to move, you got to learn to stop doing the same old thing. And you got to learn to interrupt some silence. So what? It makes you quiet on your road. Don't you be quiet. Y'all gonna talk to me? Because here it is. Don't nobody know your story like you. Don't, don't nobody know your headache like you. Don't nobody know your heartbreak like you. Don't, don't nobody know the times you were sick, the times you were broke, the times you went through divorce, the times people walked away from you, the times when family didn't understand, the times when the church didn't understand. Here it is. Don't nobody know your story like you. But when you know God was the one that kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. Can I get five of y'all in here? I'll make sick that will testify. Lord, I can't keep silent. Verse 3. Shout back with the verse 3. Says, interrupt the silence. But then can I tell you what verses 4, 5, 7, and 8 say? Verse 4, 5, 7, and 8 say, don't you dictate the drop. Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all come a little closer. See, so here it is. Think of all, oh, Mr. Floyd Wayne, watch this. Not only have I come to interrupt the silence. Do I have a witness here? But since I'm going to go forward, it's not my job to dictate the drop. And I believe today that's, that's the issue with the church of 2024. We, we, we want to both sow and dictate what is sown. Can I have any help in here? But, but I hear one of them say some water and some plants. Y'all know what I'm talking about? But God, y'all better say something to me. Do I have any help in here? Because the reality is, watch this, verse 4, 5, 7, and 8 says, it's not my job drop, but it is my job to sow good seed. And I wonder today, there anybody in the Friendship Church today that said that I got up this morning with the intentions of sowing good seed. Is there anybody here that said that I'm walking and talking with the intentions of sowing good seed? Is there anybody here that said that I'm doing what I need 
to do with the intentions of sowing good seed. So what? The person next to you don't understand. But if God has been good to you, you ought to clap them hands. You ought to say amen. You ought to open up your mouth because you know God is still worthy. I don't know. Look at the text. I'm a Bible preacher. Watch this. Look at the text. Verse 4. Do y'all see verse 4? It says, And when he saw, some fell by the wayside. Verse 5 says, Some fell upon stony places. Verse 7 says, Some fell amongst thorns. Verse 8 says, some, or it says others, fell on good ground. Yeah. Do y'all see the new text? Yeah. Look what the text says. The text says that, watch this, some fell by the way and the fowls devoured it. Some fell among stony places and, watch this, they had no root because they didn't have good depth. The text says in verse 7, some fell among thorns and the thorns choked it out. But anybody glad for verse 8? Verse 8 said, my lovers have fallen among other things. Uh, these fell on good ground. Yeah. I got out my seat to tell you today, if you want a blessing, right. you better sow on good ground. Yeah. If you want a breakthrough, you better sow on good ground. If you want God to deliver you, not from them, but from you, can I tell you what you ought to do? You ought to sow good seed here and there. In the moment when you get to your job, you ought to be sowing good seed. In the break room on your job, you ought to be sowing good seed. On the phone when you're on the phone talking to your family and friends, you ought to be sowing good seed here and there. When you walk through those doors in the sanctuary, you ought to be willing to sow good seed. Do I have a witness in here? See, see, too many of us get concerned about the sowing of the seed. But can I tell you my first thing under that second point is this? Watch this. It's not where you sow. It's what you sow. Preach a little bit of y'all saying amen. Let's try again. It's not where you sow. It's what you sow. Are you in here with me? If you want God to bless you beyond you, you ought to bless God beyond yourself. If you don't need nothing from God, then don't say nothing to God. But here it is. If I want a big breakthrough, I've got to give God a big praise. If I want a big blessing, I've got to give God a big blessing. It does not matter where I sow as long as I Tell your neighbors, it's going to drop, it's going to drop, it's going to drop. It. The text says, don't you dictate the drop. Because the increase of the, of the drop can only come from the one that's able to give the increase. Here's what I like about the text today. Jesus says, in the midst of the parable, what he does is that he gives us the certainty of what happens when we don't sow good seed. In quick one sentence statement, here it is. The thesis of this text says that if I don't sow good seed, whatever I sow will end up dying. Y'all right. ain't saying nothing to me. And then that's why I'm going to I, I don't have to hesitate when it's time to sow, when it's time to talk about the word, when it's time to give a report about who God is, when it's time to give in my time and offering here it is. I got to learn to not dictate my drop because I got to learn to interrupt some silence. And I wonder if there's anybody here who got an interrupted spirit on your heart today that say, hey, I come to draw and drop good seed. Are y'all in here with me? Watch this. Not only, not only is it not about where you drop or what you drop. It's not about when you drop, but if you drop. Am I preaching in here, y'all? It's not about where you drop. Are y'all in here with me? But what you drop. Secondly, it's not about when you drop, but if you drop. 
So today I just got out of my seat this morning to report to somebody that you you got to quit trying to find out when and where is the right time for me to sow good seed. Can I tell you, while you're trying to figure out the right time to drop and grow good seed, that right time will never come. But can I tell you, if you learn to keep moving on the orders of God, can I tell you what God will do? God, he'll come in and give you the words to say, the song to say, the message to preach, the money to give, here it is. You got to learn not to say when, but if y'all hear me preach real quick, tag your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you dropping? Are you dropping? Are you? They don't want to say that's how you know. Say, say to somebody else, say, neighbor, are you dropping? Are you dropping? Matter of fact, what are you dropping? Some of us dropping the wrong seed. And y'all ain't here. We drop a seed because of what we think folk want to hear. But I want to suggest to you, it ain't about what folk want to hear. It's about what God wants to hear. Are y'all in here with me? I thank God today because he is the living of the family. He is my bright and morning star. He is the wheel out of the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is the shelter in the midst of my star. Can I tell y'all in here, I just want to drop good seed. Why? Because if I drop good seed, watch this, he may not come when I want him to. How many of y'all know it's always? always. I was just having some matter over here, Amy's dead. How many of y'all know it's always? always. Is there anybody on my right? Thank God. If I drop and drop right, he may not come. But how many of y'all know he's always right on time? Can y'all do me a favor in here? Shot back with me, so good see. Oh, I got the quick watch this. <coughs> if I so good see. Uh-huh. The text says, I gotta learn verse three. To interrupt the silence. Listen, you can't sow if you don't go. Jesus said, if you go, lo, I'll be with you. Always even to the end of time. He said, if you go, he says, listen, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. He says, if you go, whomever the Father has put it in my hands, no man shall pluck him out. Here it is. You got to be willing to interrupt some silence, but not only do you interrupt the silence, you can't dictate where you drop. Do I have a witness here? It's not about where. It's not about when. It's about what. And it's about if. The third thing, and I promise you I'm going to my seat and watch this. The reason I'm grateful that I am able to sow good seed is because, watch this, when I sow and so right, here it is, I can stand still and see the salvation of God. I wish I would talk to this preacher. If I saw and so right, it may be raining in my life, but if I saw and so right, eventually the sun is going to start shining. And I wonder today if there's anybody in here today that say they the reason I saw it because I'm standing still and I'm waiting for my breakthrough. I can stand still and I can see the salvation of the Almighty God. How do I know because, watch this, verse 8 said, with me, verse 8. Verse 8 says, but others, are y'all going to get ready to fail on what? Good ground. It says, and then the others brought forth. The thing I like about the text is the text has no respect to person. He's not concerned about how much you sow. I think I said that Thursday night, didn't I? Yeah. He ain't concerned about how much you sow. But the text says that if you sow, God will give you your breakthrough. Can I get you to say something back to me? Can you clap your hands? Can you say amen? Can you open up your mouth? Can you say I'm standing still? Here it is. I'm looking for my breakthrough. Watch the salvation of the Almighty God. Now I know because now he says, he says, if you so, the text says in verse 8, it says, and brought forth, shout that with me, brought forth. It brought forth some a hundredfold. Some 64, and then Psalm 34. What am I saying to you today, brother? All I'm simply saying to you today is that whatever it is, you're going through. If you learn to learn to sow good 
seed. Then here it is, the third thing is you can stand still and you can see the salvation of the Almighty God. But here it is in verse number 8. The salvation of God says it came not through in addition, but it came through multiplication. Well, because the text says in verse 8, because of me standing still, it says I then was able to wait now for a multiplied breakthrough. Have I got to help you? He wasn't concerned about uh, how much it was uh, that the people were sowing. Uh, have I got to help you? But he was worried about uh, the fact of the man of uh, uh, they are going to sow. Uh, have I got to help you? And I stopped by this morning uh, on my way to heaven's table uh, to testify to somebody in the Friendship Church uh, that yes, uh, you got to learn uh, to stand still uh, and see the salvation of God. Uh, have I got to help here because if you learn uh, to stand still uh, and watch God work it out, uh, the God uh, in the order of who he is uh, sends uh, you will have uh, a multiplied breakthrough. Uh, have I got the help here and here? And I wonder this morning, uh, is there anybody in this place uh, who needs God uh, to multiply your breakthrough? Uh, have I got the help here? Uh, and I don't need God uh, to multiply uh, my breakthrough. Uh, Gems with things are going good. Can I get any help him and say, Lord, I need, I need, I need, I need you to multiply my breakthrough whenever I'm going through my situation and circumstance. Have I got me help here? But when God multiplies your breakthrough, can I tell you what God will do? God will expose you to the manifold blessings of his life. Have we got the hip here? The Bible says the ends of Jesus came and orchestrated the parable. And he says to the midst of the parable, he says that when he left the house, I went out by the course of the seaside. And can I tell you what happened? They pressed him because of the large crowd. Have we got the hip in here? But I'm so glad that when they pressed him, he sorted to give them some understanding. Have we got the hip here? He gave them the parable of the seed sower. He said there was a man that went out and began to sow the seed. And I tell everybody, in my clothes of my learning, you got to learn to interrupt the silence. He says that when he sowed, he sowed and some fell on stony ground. Some fell among thorns, but some fell on the good ground. Which tells me to think, don't worry about the dictation of the drop. If you sow, God will give the increase. Have we got any help in here? If you sow, God will come in to see about you. Have we got any help in here? I'm so very glad that yes, that when I sow, I don't have to work behind my blessing. But when I sow, all I got to do is stand still. Now I got the help in here. Is there anybody in this place that I had to sit the stand still? Is there anybody in this place that I had to just sit and wait on God? In my hand, you just sit before your arms and cry to the Lord. Lord, I have mercy. Have I got the help in here? And when you cry, Lord, have mercy. Your testimony is He made my come all sucks in here when I want him to. But he always right on time. A good morning to the Friendship Church. Thank God. But let me stop back. But I stop back on the third Sunday in February to testify in Alabama of what you're sowing. It's about if you're sowing. Now we got me up in here. In Alabama of where you're sowing is about when you're going to sow. And I stop by to tell you God is standing there with our says on the sake. Whosoever would come unto me, I will in no wise cash out. Have I got the help in here? How do you know that you're so good seed? God will multiply 
by your seat. Have we got any help in here? The last time I remember the word saying a good seed, it was sore. But when Jesus gave up his life, and came down through 42 generations. And I tell you what happened. He sowed good seed when he healed the sick, and when he raised the dead, when he gave sight to the blind, and when he fed 5,000. And I tell you what happened. The call of the good seed song. I heard a Jesus say that if you hang me up on the earth, I'll draw men to me. Can I tell you what happened? They whipped him all night long. They put a crown upon his head. They speared him in his side. But one Friday evening, y'all need to hear with me. One Friday can I tell you what happened? A good seed was sown for 33 years. But they took him and marched him up the village of the wolf. They took him to the place of the skull. Have we got any help in here? But can I tell everybody, even those who know anything about science, but anything to live, a son that first got to die. Are y'all been here with me? They took that seed, hung it on the cross. Everybody glad he died. Have I got the help in here? Even see, I bet you got a sore. I'm not only does it have to die. That seed, I got to be buried. Have I got the help in here? They buried him all night Friday. They buried him all day Saturday. But hey, have I got the help in here? The seed, the seed of multiplying. I heard the seed say, I got not some power, I got not a portion of power, but I got all power in the palm of my hand. And I answer all the question. I'm going to my seat. Did anybody in this place I thank God he got up? Did anybody in this building I thank God the Lord got up? Everybody in this place, I thank God he didn't stay dead. But early, have we got me help in here? Early, y'all say something to me. Early, Sunday morning, he got up. All power in his hand. Do me one last favor. Can you say yeah? Yeah. Can y'all say yeah? Yeah.
breaks down and shake it together. Was I not going in my study Thursday? Running over, shall men get into your bosom. We offer Christ to you. Every head is bowed and eyes closed. If you're here today, will you come? Will you come now while you have a chance? We offer Christ to you, or maybe you are saved. But then now you have strayed away from your salvation. I want to suggest to you today if you just come back, God will in no wise turn you out. Well, maybe you are saved and you haven't strayed away, but maybe you just need a home to worship in, a place to be planted in. I want to suggest to you today if you come, you can worship here in the Friendship Church, 101 Friendships, Green Hamilton, Georgia. If you're in the Facebook Live, Facebook chat, type I want to be saved, or type I want to come back to the end, or type I want to make friendship my home. If that's you, will you come? Don't put off today for tomorrow, for tomorrow is not promised. For the Bible says that they hit my walls hard and I'm your heart if that's you, will you come? Will you come, will you come, will you come? Will you come, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? We've done what has been required, but yet again, there's room for one more. Put your hands together, give the Lord a big God bless you. Come on, I, I'll take that one. Come on, y'all, give God a big God bless you.
Libertad, Tiago Ortiz.